All right, friends, here we go. Reading through the Bible together in 2023, beginning the book of Jeremiah right now. And as I told you at the end of Isaiah a few minutes ago, Jeremiah, like Isaiah, was a prophet. And some of the best prophecy in the Bible was written by those two. And we're going to get the rest of it before we finish reading through the Bible together. If the rapture doesn't happen first, you know, the rapture really could happen at any moment, friends. I may not even get this first page read here. I don't know. But we start in Jeremiah. Uh, Jer there was... I can't remember, I think seven different Jeremiah's referenced in the Bible, but this is the Jeremiah, and he was quoted in the New Testament, I think nine times or something like that. And so when I read the New Testament to y'all, you've already heard some from Jeremiah quoted by other authors of the Bible. So here we go, Jeremiah chapter 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. He came also in the days of Je Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, this is prophecy fixing to be read, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Friends, this is not on the subject that we're reading here, but God knows you and me before we entered the womb, while we were in the womb, while we were in the womb, he sanctified us for his service and he ordained us for whatever. Once we come out of that womb and get to an age of understanding, we need to accept him and be obedient to him. He created us for his glory, not for our fun and partying and running around in glory, but for his glory. And we best obey him. All right, getting down off my soapbox now, and let me figure out where I was at here. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I can command thee, thou shalt speak. Bam, y'all. <laughs> when God tells you he's got a job for us, we don't tell him we're too young or too little or too inexperienced. We say, Yes, Father, and we go. And just like he told Jeremiah here, he said, I will command what thou shalt speak. When I go witnessing to people, I start the conversation with me talking just like I am now. But I guarantee you, the Holy Spirit takes over. And I have not a clue what I told that person. I don't. A lot of times the Holy Spirit will start talking to me while I'm sitting here at my desk. And I'll just start writing, taking notes on what the Holy Spirit's saying to me. Or 
writing down scripture references the Holy Spirit gives me. And I'm writing so fast, I, I have literally, literally at times told the Holy Spirit to slow down that I don't know shorthand. <laughs> I want to write down everything he says. And then after he's finished with me, I go back and read what I wrote because I don't have a clue what I wrote. I'm just obeying the Holy Spirit. And that's the way it works, friends. All right, let me find out where I was at here. Verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Bam again, y'all. Witnessing at first is scary. And up here it was scary because I had my life threatened. I had one guy wanting to whoop my butt, and I thought he was going to try. I was ready to take him down, but I didn't want to. It's, it's not fun sometimes. And it can be very scary sometimes. But be not afraid of their faces, saith the Lord, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Bam. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. And that's exactly what I just told you the Holy Spirit does to me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's words that comes out of my mouth, not my words. I would sit there and stutter and stammer and not know what to say. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. God doesn't sit still, y'all. He has plans. And those plans don't get done by him sitting on his butt. And the plans he has for us do not get done with us sitting on our butts either. Verse 11, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? Jeremiah said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then saith the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. For I will hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the earth. And this is prophecy being written hundreds and hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one on his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls thereof round about and against all the cities of Judah and I will utter my judgments against them touching all their wickedness who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worshiped the works of their own hands. The only thing we need to be worshiping is the works of God's hand, y'all. I'm serious there. I'm serious as a heart attack there. You worship worship the works of man's hands. That ain't right. God is a jealous God. Now, let, let me make a side note there. When your kids or your spouse does something, you need to praise their works too. You really do. God's works above all comes first. Thou, therefore, gird up thy loins and arise, and speak unto them all that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before them. For behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city, and an iron pillar, and brazen walls against the whole land against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee, 
for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to deliver thee. Chapter 2, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, God is still giving stuff to Jeremiah to prophesy, and just just about everything in here has happened already, y'all. Just about all of it. Exactly as God gave it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. It doesn't say evil might come upon them, it says evil will come upon them, saith the Lord. And the Lord does not lie. The Lord cannot lie. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob. We Gentiles are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he's speaking to us. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O ye house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. That's all the Jews and all the Gentiles is who he's addressing right there in verse 4. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me that they are gone far from me and have walked after vanity and are become vain? That's a daggum good question, y'all. What iniquity did we find in God to turn away from him? I guarantee you there is no iniquity in God. So us turning away from him is us all on our own, going after our foolish lusts, which will cast us into an everlasting hell if we don't repent and turn away from our foolishness. Neither say they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt and that led us through the wilderness through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of the shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. <clears throat> The priest said not, Where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. I guarantee you, anything, anything you do, But it's not for God. He will not profit from it, and we will have to pay for it. We will account for every sin, every shortcoming in our life, unless we repent of them, get forgiven of them, which God is sitting there ready to forgive you, but you got to repent and turn from that foolishness, y'all. <clears throat> i got to get a drink of water. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. He is a very patient God. For Passover, but his patience is not going to last much longer. 
prophecy tells us what's happening and it's all in progress now We're going right up to the very end of the end <clears throat> he's just about had it with being patient for pass over the isles of Chittim and see and send unto Kedor and consider diligently and see if there be any such a thing hath a nation changed their gods which are yet no gods but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit that's going to cost them it's going to cost them for all eternity if they don't repent be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Bam, yo. How many warnings does he have to give? Verse 13 of chapter 2. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. I got a cramp in my back, so I'm acting weird here. I act weird even when I don't have a cr crick in my back. <laughs> I really do have a cramp in my back. My muscles are acting up on me. Verse 14, is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born slave? Why is he spoiled? That's God speaking, y'all. And look at Israel today. I love Israel with all my heart, soul, and mind. I pray for Israel every day, several times a day. But they are spoiled, just like he said. Verse 15, the young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. Also the children of Noth and Tahapanes have broken the crown of thy head. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself? In that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way. And now what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? to drink the waters of Sihor? Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria to drink the waters of the river? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord God of hosts. The fear of the Lord better be in you. For of old, for of old time, I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidst, I will not transgress when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest, playing the harlot. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed, holy completely, not holy, holy, holy completely, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? For though thou was with For though thou wash thee with mitre, nitre, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is more before me, saith the Lord God. How canst thou, thou say, I am not polluted? I have not gone after Balaam. See thy way in the valley, know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways. A wild ass used to the wilderness that snuffeth up the wind at her pleasure and her occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves, and her month they shall 
find her. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst. But thou saidst, There is no hope, no, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets, saying to a stock, Thou art my father, and to a stone, Thou hast brought me forth, for they have turned their back unto me, and not their face, but in the time of their trouble they will say, Arise and save us. And that time is just about coming very soon, y'all. And where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. For according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. That's saying they've got a different god for every city and not the real God. Wherefore will, I, will ye plead with me? Ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore say, my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. Can a maid forget her ornaments, or a bride her attire? Yet my people, the Jews, have forgotten me days without number. That's true. They did. Why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways? Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these. Yet thou sayest, Because I am innocent, surely his anger shall turn from me. Uh, they're fixing to find out what his anger is going to turn to. Yes, they are. And I pray for them. I seriously, sincerely pray for them. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. And that's exactly what they're doing as they sin. Why gettest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt, as thou wast ashamed of Assyria. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him and wash, and wash thine hands upon thy head, for the Lord hath rejected thy confidences, and thou shalt not prosper in them and he's talking about eternal prosperity the Jews are very prosperous for the most part they're very wealthy they're smart they're very smart people they work hard they're not afraid to get dirty and work but they have rejected God they have many gods with little Jews and it's going to cost them if they don't repent soon. Oh, goodness. I read a lot. I better stop this and get it uploading for you. Got uh, friends, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I enjoy this time with y'all. I enjoy y'all's comments, and I'm getting a little better at keeping up with the comments. I, I found one last night, though, that was three days old. I don't know how I missed it y'all just bear with me and I'm doing the best I can. Love y'all.
talk to y'all tomorrow unless the rapture happens tonight.